So this movie opens up with a bang. We're watching people live their daily lives on a busy street in South Korea when suddenly we see a woman jump from the top of a building. We then meet restaurant worker Yoon Yi. She convinces her roommate slash co-worker slash best friend to drive her to the scene of the suicide. The two head over to the scene where Yoon Yi stands over the chalk outline very distraught. The next morning, an elderly woman visits her apartment. Yuni's having coffee with the woman and the woman says she would like to offer her a job as a live-in nanny. The woman says the pay is more than her job now and Yuni says say less and takes a job. Yuni takes the train to her new place of work which seems to be a pretty large house. She meets Hei Ra whom she will be taking care of and if you didn't notice Hei Ra is pretty pregnant. Miss Cho who's the lady who offered her the job gives Yuni her new uniform and she gets to work. Yuni's primary job is to take care of Hei Ra's young daughter, Nami. Yuni meets Nami and walks her up to her room while playing around with her a bit along the way. Later, Yuni and Miss Cho make dinner for the family, then eat the leftovers. The two are brushing their teeth when suddenly a car horn sounds. This guy, Hoon, walks in with some goons. Hoon is a very successful businessman. He introduces himself to Yuni as Nami's father and tells her more about her household duties. Hoon sends Miss Cho to get him a bottle of wine. Yuni serves the wine to Hoon and his wife, then heads to bed exhausted by the hard day's work. The next day, Yuni and Miss Cho make breakfast, and Yuni heads over to serve Hoon. On her way, she witnesses Hoon's tantalizing piano skills. She becomes pretty fascinated with his skills. Hoon is heading off to work, and everyone goes to the front of the house to see him off. Later that day, Yuni is washing Hei Ra's hair and doing her nails. Hoon comes home from work and has some wine. He then walks into the bathroom where Yuni is cleaning the bathtub and we witness her bare thigh. Hoon definitely likes what he sees. Yuni ain't about that though and she walks off. The next day the family goes on vacation. The fam is vibing in a hot tub while Yuni jumps into the cold pool. Later that night we see Hoon and his wife hanging out. Once she falls asleep, Hoon heads over to Yuni's room probably to hang out with drink in hand. He pours Yuni a drink, then begins to take a tour of her body with his hand. He then orders her to, well, YouTube won't allow me to say what he ordered her to do, but look at this image and use your imagination. The gang is heading back from their vacation, and Yuni doesn't look very happy about what she did. Once they're home, Heira thanks Yuni for taking care of her, and she begins to feel pretty bad. Yuni lays on her bed. The next morning, Yuni is helping Heira when Hoon is leaving for work. He gives her a seductive look, and he leaves. We cut to later that night and Yoon Yi is reading Nami a bedtime story. Hoon gets home and Yoon Yi and Miss Cho greet him. Hoon congratulates Miss Cho on her son being elected as a state prosecutor and gives Yoon Yi a letter to give Miss Cho. Miss Cho angrily snatches the letter and storms off. Later that night, Hoon can't sleep so he holds a glass of wine on top of his stairs like a menace, thinking about how he should spend his night. Unbeknownst to Hoon though, Miss Cho is also awake and can't sleep. She walks over to Hoon's room and sees that he is not in bed. Well, Miss Cho realizes that this can probably only mean one thing. Yup, Yoon Yi and Hoon are exercising. Miss Cho stands outside listening to their moans. Next morning, Miss Cho and Yoon Yi are making breakfast. Yoon Yi puts on lipstick to look good for Hoon and Miss Cho notices this. Yoon Yi serves Hoon breakfast as he's playing the piano. Hoon tells her to pick up a paper off the floor. She picks it up then leaves. It's a check. Yuni is sitting on the stairs slightly upset because she's probably feeling a bit like a prostitute. I personally say get your money sis, but that's neither here nor there. Miss Cho calls her to eat. Later, they serve the family drinks and finish their duties for the day so the two maids hang out in the bathroom. Miss Cho asks Yuni if she has a man in her life and if she likes being a nanny. Yuni says she has no man and loves her job. The next morning we see Hei Ra and Miss Cho having tea. Miss Cho tells Hei Ra that Yuni has gained some weight and tells her Yuni is probably pregnant. Yuni and her roommate are walking over to Yuni's mother's grave when she tells her roommate that she's been having an affair with her boss, and she even tells her she enjoyed their nights together. She then gives her roommate the check that Hoon gave her. Her roommate takes the check, but seems pretty worried about Yuni. Hey Ra's mother comes to visit, and I'll just tell you now the reason she came to visit is because Miss Cho snitched and told her Yuni is having an affair with Hoon. They're walking down some stairs and see Yuni cleaning the chandelier. Hey Ra's mother pretends to fall and grab onto the ladder Yoon Yi is using, knocking it away. Yoon Yi begins to hang from the chandelier while Miss Cho and Nami watch. She asks Hey Ra's mom to pull her over the railing and she says nah. Yoon Yi eventually falls. 
Miss Cho takes Yunyu to the hospital to get checked, and it turns out she had a concussion. Hei Ra's mother then becomes a whole menace and takes charge of the situation. She tells Hei Ra, Yunyu is for sure sleeping with your man and you're sitting here like a punk. She says once Hoon returns tonight, they're going to confront him together. Then she orders Miss Cho to come home as the doctors did not find any signs of pregnancy in Yunyi. The next day, Miss Cho brings Yunyi flowers from Hei Ra's mother and a consolation check. Hoon comes back from his trip and asks Miss Cho where his side piece, I mean, the nanny is at. He tells him that Yunyi had malaria and had to chill in the hospital overnight. At the hospital, the doctor tells Yunyi she's four weeks pregnant and congratulates her. Yunyi does not seem excited about this news though. Her roommate tells her to pack a bag and leave the house for the safety of her and her child. Yunyi sits silently. A very upset looking Hei Ra is staring out a window while her mother tells her they will stop any trick Yunyi tries to pull. Yunyi returns to work and she brings her friend. The women of the house all greet Yunyi, but there's some tension in the air, especially with Hei Ra's mother. Later that night, Hei Ra is in her room, heartbroken. Her mother tells her this is what all rich men do, and sometimes you just have to deal with it because that paper is coming in. In the middle of the night, Hei Ra walks over to Yunyi's room with a golf club and stands over her while she sleeps. Miss Cho followed her and warns her against it. She gets upset and throws the club at Miss Cho and leaves. The next morning, Yunyi is taking a bath and she tells Miss Cho the tension is unbearable and she feels unsafe. Miss Cho tells Yunyi she should leave while she can and she understands more than anyone what Hei Ra and her mother are capable of. While Hei Ra is walking, her mother tells her she must deal with Yunyi's child as Yunyi will rise to the same social status as Hei Ra since she is carrying Hoon's child. Yunyi goes to Hei Ra's room and tells her that a family emergency has come up and she must leave. Hei Ra stares at her and begins smacking her repeatedly. Yunyi then shockingly stares back at Hei Ra. She begins to apologize after realizing they all knew about her affair with Hoon. Hei Ra's mother says she would give her $100,000 if she aborts the baby. Later, Miss Cho gives Yunyi an ice pack and urges her to ask for more money and to just abort the baby. That night, Nami goes over to Yunyi and apologizes for her grandmother pushing the ladder from under her the other day. Yunyi is surprised to learn that she almost got attempted murdered, but she says it's all good and tries to brush the situation from Nami's mind. The next day, Hei Ra is heading out. She figured that Yunyi wouldn't give up her baby for all the money in the world, so she decides to poison the tea that Yunyi drinks every day. Hei Ra then tells Miss Cho that Yunyi must sleep in her room for as long as Yunyi is staying with them from now on. Hei Ra is leaving for the hospital with her mother because it's soon time for her to have her child. Nami goes to Yunyi's room, having a feeling that she's going to leave soon, so she gets sad. Yunyi explains that she's going to be having her own baby, and she got to do what she got to do. Yunyi then goes to Miss Cho and says she knows what she must do. She will be keeping her child. Miss Cho and Yunyi dine, and she explains to Yunyi that Hei Ra's family has some pretty unsavory fellows on their side, and she shouldn't mess with them. Hoon is visiting Hei Ra, who has had her children. Hoon is kissing Hei Ra when she bites his lips extremely hard. He looks at her, then awkwardly leaves. She then curses them out quietly. Yunyi is in Hei Ra's room using her things. Hoon is very upset while staring at the mirror and inspecting his lips. Hoon walks into his bathroom and sees Yunyi taking a bath. Yunyi tells him to join her. She tells him how she's been treated for the past few days and also tells him about her pregnancy. Miss Cho walks over and tells Yunyi to just get out. An embarrassed Yunyi begins to leave the tub when she suddenly has a miscarriage. Yunyi is at the hospital and is very distraught. She asks Hoon if he will have her child, to which he says yes, although the child is most likely miscarried. Yunyi feels better and she smiled as she's carried away. Hoon confronts Hei Ra's mother and they begin to argue. He says she's terrible for putting Yunyi through all that. She tells Hoon that the child wasn't his and that Yunyi was sleeping around with different men before she got the job. Hoon says he knows the child was his and that Hei Ra and her mother killed his child. Yuni is devastated at the official news of her no longer being with child and ponders about who could have snitched about her pregnancy. Miss Cho, who has been with her the whole night, says it was I. Yuni breaks out into tears and smacks Miss Cho's hair out of place. Miss Cho regrets snitching on her and gives her a check to leave and start fresh. Yuni says she ain't leaving without her cold, sweet revenge on Hei Ra. Miss Cho says I bet to each their own. Yuni gets kicked out of the house and moves back in with her roommate. Her roommate tells her to just move on. She got outplayed and it is what it is. Yuni heads back to the mansion the next day to execute her revenge. She runs into Miss Cho at the front who gives her a hug. Meanwhile, Hoon is in the bath with his wife who says she doesn't want him to touch her since he's a whole cheater. He says she was pregnant for a long time and well, he just couldn't resist. 
He walks out of the bath and sees Yuni holding the newborn twins and she tells him to stay quiet. He quickly grabs his children and calls for his wife, claiming Yuni has gone insane. The family is downstairs when they tell Miss Cho to get Yuni out of the house, not knowing how she got in. Miss Cho says it was I who let Yuni in and quits on the spot, leaving to get her bag. Yuni makes her entrance at the top of the stairs, waving at the family. She apologizes to Nami for the situation. Miss Cho looks at Yuni and says, Girl, let's just go. Yuni says, Nah, man, I'm good. Who says he will pay her to just leave and live good? And she curses him out. She says she can't live like this and straps a rope on her neck. Then, well, she jumps off the balcony, hanging herself. And just to make sure she made her point, she sets herself on fire. The family is horrified and watch in terror. Miss Cho walks out calmly as if nothing is happening. The movie ends with the family celebrating Nami's birthday while speaking English, all having a grand old time. Hey Ra even sings to her daughter while Pops pops a bottle of champagne. The two seem pretty off as Nami silently watches them. And that's the end of our show ladies and gentlemen. If you like this recap, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this one. Take care.